The galaxy's most diplomatically precarious negotiation room was far more intimidating than Van Rick had anticipated. He stood at the center of a high-tech sterile conference room that seemed to stretch endlessly into the metallic horizon. Holographic screens flickered with data from multiple star systems, but none of that mattered to him now. His palms were sweaty, not from the technicality of diplomacy, but from the fact that today's meeting involved her. Virleth, the alien warrior, wasn't just intimidating, she was a force of nature, clad in armor that shimmered like liquid metal, with eyes that could pierce through the void of space, she radiated an energy that Venric could only describe as barely contained chaos. To her right stood Jaitiri, her companion and fellow delegate, whose calm demeanor did nothing to ease Venric's anxiety. Jaitiri, as always, seemed unfazed by the mounting tension. Her face was expressionless, her eyes half-lidded, and her overall attitude screamed, I've seen worse. Vanrick straightened his jacket, trying to focus on his role as the human diplomat meant to bring these warring factions together. But before he could open his mouth, Vyrleth slammed her fist onto the table, cracking its surface. Not good, Vanrick thought. Not good at all. Do you really expect us to negotiate with them? Vyrleth growled, her voice rumbling like distant thunder. Her battle-hardened hands clenched and unclenched, her sharp features twisted into something fierce and primal. Uh, I mean, Vanrick stammered, trying to keep his composure. Diplomacy is, uh, about compromise? Jaitiri glanced at him with her trademark deadpan expression. It seems, she said dryly, our warrior is entering her battle frenzy. Battle what now? Vanrick blinked. He hadn't read about this in the briefing. No one told him alien warriors could go into uncontrollable rages mid-negotiation. Frenzy, Jaitiri repeated unblinking, a heightened state of aggression triggered by unresolved conflict. She will remain in this state until she either fights or calms down. Virleth let out a low, growling sound, her muscles tensing further. The energy in the room shifted. It was like standing next to a ticking bomb. Vanrick wasn't sure if it was her physical presence or the way the air seemed to hum with intensity around her. But he knew one thing for certain. This woman could destroy him without breaking a sweat. So, Vanrick said, swallowing nervously, how exactly do we calm her down? Jaitiri looked at him, her voice impossibly neutral. She requires human touch. Vanrick nearly choked on his own spit. Excuse me? Jaitiri's eyebrow raised ever so slightly. It's a calming technique, a custom of her people. Your presence, your touch will ground her. Uh, uh-huh. Vanrick nodded, clearly not understanding a single thing. Touch, as in... Jaitiri tilted her head slightly, as though contemplating whether she should bother explaining further. Not like that, she said finally. Simply proximity. A form of shared presence. You need to stand by her side, unafraid. Vanrick's mind raced. Stand next to an enraged alien warrior, that's your plan. He looked at Virleth, whose eyes were now practically glowing with intensity. His instincts screamed at him to run, but this was his job, diplomatic duty and all that. All right, he said, trying to sound braver than he felt. I can do that. Just stand there, next to her. Correct, Jatiri replied, her face still perfectly neutral. And make sure not to flinch. Vanrick took a deep breath, summoning every ounce of courage he could muster, and approached Vierleth. She was even more imposing up close her towering frame, her battle-scarred armor, the raw energy practically vibrating off her. He hesitated for a second, but then stepped into her space, standing close enough to feel the heat radiating from her body. Vierleth's head snapped towards him, her eyes narrowing. For a moment Vanrick thought she might tear him apart right there, but instead her breathing slowed and the tension in her muscles seemed to ease, just a little. Vanrick, she growled, her voice low and dangerous, are you touching me? Not technically, he said quickly, holding up his hands. Just, uh, standing nearby. For, you know, calming purposes. A low chuckle rumbled from Violet's chest. You think you can calm me, human? Her words were sharp, but there was a glimmer of amusement in her eyes. A challenge. Venric felt his confidence growing. At least she wasn't killing him. Well, he said, shrugging with exaggerated nonchalance, I've been told I have a very calming presence. To his surprise, Vyrleth let out a bark of laughter. You are either very brave or very foolish, 
she said, her voice less aggressive now, though still laced with intensity. Probably a bit of both, Vanrick admitted, trying to match her humor. But I'm still standing, so that's a good sign, right? Jatiri watched the exchange with mild interest, her arms folded. Remarkably, it appears to be working. Violet's shoulders relaxed slightly, and the violent edge that had threatened to consume her began to fade. You may live, she said, her tone mock serious, as if granting him a great favor. Well, that's a relief, Vanrick muttered under his breath, stepping back just enough to feel slightly safer but still maintaining his calming presence. Violeth turned to face him fully, her fierce expression softening into something more playful. Tell me, human, do you always offer your touch so easily, or am I just special? Venric blinked, unsure how to respond to that. Uh, careful, Jayatiri interjected, her voice dry as ever. The warrior is known to toy with her prey before delivering the final blow. Venric gulped, noted. The tension in the room finally broke, and Virleth's battle frenzy seemed to dissipate entirely. She stepped back, giving him a nod of respect. You have my thanks, Venric. I may yet reconsider crushing you. Venric exhaled, finally feeling like he could breathe again. I'll take that as a win. Jayatiri, observing the two with her ever-neutral gaze, simply said, We should continue the negotiations. And as Vanrick glanced between the calm, collected Jaitiri and the now-composed Viorleth, he couldn't help but wonder if he'd just narrowly survived the most bizarre first contact meeting of his career. This is going to be a long negotiation, he thought, rubbing the back of his neck as they resumed their diplomatic duties. Vanrick wasn't sure if he had just survived a near-death experience or participated in the most awkward alien cultural exchange ever recorded in human history. Either way, he was still alive, which in his book counted as a win. Jaitiri was already moving on, her calm and methodical demeanor unshaken by the earlier events. She gestured toward the long conference table, where holographic documents flickered into existence, detailing the terms of the peace treaty. Viorleth now more composed but still radiating that intense warrior energy, crossed her arms and eyed Venric with something between amusement and mild curiosity. Shall we proceed? Jayatiri's voice broke the silence. Yeah, sure, Venric replied, his voice a little shaky. He cleared his throat, trying to regain his professional composure. Let's get to it. As they began discussing the finer points of the treaty, Venric found it difficult to concentrate. Viorleth's presence was distracting, to say the least. She sat across from him, her sharp eyes trained on every word he said, and though the battle frenzy had passed, her intensity hadn't diminished. Every so often her gaze would flicker to him, and he could feel the weight of her curiosity. It was unsettling, but also strangely intriguing. The negotiations were proceeding smoothly enough until Jatiri mentioned something about establishing joint training exercises between human and alien forces. That will not work, Viorleth said, her voice firm. Vanrick glanced up. Why not? Viorleth's eyes narrowed slightly. Human soldiers lack the discipline and stamina necessary to train alongside our warriors. Vanrick blinked, caught off guard by her bluntness. Excuse me, I think you're underestimating human resilience. Jaitiri tilted her head, observing the interaction with her usual unreadable expression. Viorleth's assessment is based on previous encounters with your species. It is not personal, merely factual. Vanrick felt a twinge of indignation. Factual? I've seen human soldiers endure harsh conditions, fight impossible battles, and come out on top. We may not have your, uh, battle frenzies, but we know how to handle ourselves. Viorleth smirked, and Vanrick couldn't decide if it was mocking or impressed. Perhaps you are different, Vanrick, she said, leaning forward slightly. But your species has much to prove. Before he could stop himself, Vanrick blurted out, Oh, really? And what do you need to prove exactly? The words hung in the air for a second longer than they should have. Jaitiri arched an eyebrow, and Vanrick immediately regretted his sudden boldness. He half expected Viorleth to leap across the table and throttle him, but instead she chuckled, a low, dangerous sound that sent shivers down his spine. I like you, Vanrick, Viorleth said, her smirk widening. You are amusing. Amusing, Vanrick repeated, incredulous. I wasn't trying to be funny. Yet you are, she replied smoothly, leaning back in her chair. You challenge me in a way most humans wouldn't dare. I find that refreshing. 
Venric wasn't sure if that was a compliment or a thinly veiled threat. Either way, the tension in the room shifted again, and this time, it wasn't the kind that came with battle frenzy or unresolved conflict. It was something else, something unspoken and far more confusing. He glanced at Jaitiri, hoping for some kind of buffer or clarification, but she merely nodded as if everything was proceeding as expected. Shall we continue? Jaitiri asked, her tone as neutral as ever. Right, yes, of course, Venric said quickly, eager to move on from whatever strange back and forth he'd just engaged in with Viorleth. He pulled up the next section of the treaty, trying to refocus on the task at hand, but the momentary calm didn't last long. As the negotiations dragged on, Venric found himself continually distracted by Viorleth's piercing gaze and Jatiri's occasional unsettling remarks. Every time he made a suggestion, Viorleth either shot it down with brutal honesty or countered with some alien custom that made no sense to him. It wasn't just the content of her responses that threw him off, but the way she seemed to enjoy challenging him. Finally, after what felt like hours of back and forth, Venric couldn't take it anymore. He leaned back in his chair, rubbing his temples. Okay, can we just pause for a second? I'm trying to understand your customs here, but I feel like I'm missing something. Jaitiri looked at him with mild amusement. What are you not understanding, Vanrick? Well, for starters, he said, gesturing vaguely at Viorleth, there's the whole battle frenzy thing, and now you're telling me that human soldiers aren't disciplined enough? I get that we're different, but I feel like I'm stumbling through this negotiation blind. Virleth's smirk returned. Perhaps you should consider listening more closely rather than stumbling. I am listening, Venric shot back, though not angrily. I'm just... lost in translation, I guess. Jatiri's eyes sparkled with something that might have been amusement. Perhaps it would help if you understood more of our... subtler traditions. Venric frowned. Like what? Jatiri gestured toward Virleth. You've already encountered one. Our form of emotional grounding. Touch in our culture is not merely physical. It is a way of stabilizing the mind, of creating an unspoken connection. But there are many forms of grounding, Vanrick. It is not always touch that calms a warrior. Viorleth's eyes were locked onto his, her expression unreadable but intense. What else is there? Vanrick asked hesitantly, feeling the weight of her gaze. Trust, Jaitiri said simply. Trust? respect, and a willingness to stand alongside us without judgment or fear. It is as much about presence as it is about action. That is what you must learn. Venric swallowed, feeling a new wave of tension rise, not the dangerous kind that had marked Viorleth's earlier frenzy, but something more personal, more revealing. He'd been thinking of the negotiation as a series of challenges, a task to be completed, but now it felt different. It felt like a test, not just of his diplomacy, but of something deeper. I see, Vanrick said quietly. So it's not just about calming her down. It's about proving I'm willing to stand with her. Viorleth's smirk softened into something more serious. Exactly. Vanrick took a deep breath, nodding. All right, I'm willing to stand with you, whatever that means. Jaitiri nodded in approval, her calm gaze never wavering. Then let us continue. There is still much to discuss. As they returned to the treaty negotiations, the tension in the room shifted once again, this time toward something more productive, more cooperative. Venric still didn't fully understand all the customs at play, but for the first time, he felt like he was starting to get it. And as Viorleth watched him with those fierce, unyielding eyes, he realized that perhaps this negotiation was as much about building trust between individuals as it was about building peace between worlds. Vanrick had expected many things in his career as a diplomat, tough negotiations, culture clashes, maybe even the occasional intergalactic misunderstanding. But sitting across from an alien warrior with the intensity of a supernova trying to figure out if he was supposed to calm her down with emotional presence or simply survive her piercing gaze, that hadn't been on his list. The negotiations were progressing, albeit slowly, with Veerleth continuing to challenge everything he suggested. It wasn't just her words, sharp, direct, and sometimes outright dismissive. It was the way she looked at him, as if she were sizing him up for something far beyond diplomacy. But Venric was starting to get used to it, sort of. Jaitiri, still the epitome of calm, guided the discussion forward with the same detached efficiency that had unnerved Venric from the start. 
We have reviewed the provisions for shared resources, she said, her voice steady. The remaining question is how we will implement the joint defense training exercises. Vyarleth, arms crossed, gave Venric a sidelong glance. I still believe humans will struggle to match our methods. Venric suppressed a sigh. I understand that our methods are different, but the whole point is collaboration, right? We're supposed to learn from each other. Learning, yes, Vyarleth said, her tone skeptical. But not all species are capable of adapting as quickly as others. He leaned forward, trying to keep his frustration in check. You might be surprised at how adaptable humans can be. Virleth arched an eyebrow and her gaze softened, just slightly. Prove it, Venric blinked. Prove it? How? Jaitiri's voice cut in smoothly. Perhaps a demonstration would be appropriate. Venric straightened in his seat, his confusion apparent. A demonstration of what, exactly? Before Jatiri could answer, Viorleth stood, her tall frame towering over both Vanric and the negotiation table. A demonstration of human adaptability. Join me for a training session. Vanric's stomach flipped. A training session? Yes, Viorleth said with a small, dangerous smile. We will see if you are as adaptable as you claim. Jatiri, as usual, didn't seem phased by the sudden change in tone. It is an excellent opportunity to strengthen diplomatic ties. Venric resisted the urge to groan. He was a diplomat, not a soldier. The last thing he needed was to be tossed into some alien training scenario where the odds were stacked against him. But the glint in Virleth's eyes told him that there was no backing out now. Fine, he said, doing his best to sound confident. I'll join your training session. Virleth's smile widened, and for the first time Venric wondered if she had been planning this from the start. Good, we begin at dawn. The next morning, Vanrick found himself standing in what could only be described as an alien battlefield simulation. The terrain shifted with holographic precision, turning from desert to jungle to icy wasteland in the blink of an eye. Viorleth, already dressed in full battle gear, stood a few feet away, her expression unreadable. This is your chance, human, Viorleth said, her voice echoing in the open simulation space. Prove that your species is as resilient as you claim. Vanric glanced down at the training gear he had been handed, a far cry from the usual diplomatic attire he was used to. The armor felt too tight in some places and too loose in others. This feels a little... extreme, he muttered. Vyarleth didn't respond right away. Instead, she walked up to him, standing so close that Vanric could feel the heat radiating off her. Her eyes, as fierce as ever, locked onto his, and for a moment the world around them seemed to fade. You are not here to be comfortable, she said, her voice low. You are here to survive. Vanric gulped. Right, survive. No problem. With that, Virleth stepped back, her posture relaxed but poised, like a predator waiting for the right moment to strike. The first test is simple, she said. You will face a series of challenges, each designed to test your adaptability. Your goal is to complete them without dying. Vanric wasn't sure if she was joking or not. And if I don't complete them, he asked, raising an eyebrow. Then I was right about human resilience, Viorleth said with a smirk. Now begin. Before Venric could protest, the simulation flickered, and suddenly he found himself in the middle of an alien jungle, the sounds of unseen creatures echoing all around him. Great, he thought, this is fine, totally fine. The first challenge was straightforward enough. Navigate through the jungle without triggering any traps. Easier said than done. As Vanric crept through the underbrush, he couldn't help but notice Virleth watching him from a distance, her arms crossed, a smirk on her face. No pressure. Every time he narrowly avoided a tripwire or sidestepped a hidden pitfall, he glanced back at Viorleth, half expecting her to laugh or mock his efforts. But she didn't. In fact, she seemed intrigued. By the time Vanric reached the end of the jungle section, sweating and exhausted, Viorleth met him at the clearing, her expression unreadable. You survived. Yeah, Vanric said, panting slightly. I survived. Virleth's gaze softened just a little. Perhaps there is more to you than I thought. Vanric wasn't sure if that was a compliment or a challenge, but he decided to take it as a win. I told you, humans are adaptable. Virleth's lips curved into a smile, not the dangerous one he had seen before, but something more genuine. Perhaps... Before Venric could respond, Jaitiri's voice echoed through the simulation, interrupting the moment. You have completed the first challenge. 
There is still much to learn, but it appears progress has been made. Venric glanced at Violet, who gave him a small nod of approval. And for the first time since this whole ordeal began, Venric felt like he had earned a sliver of her respect. Later that day, as they returned to the negotiation table, Venric couldn't help but feel a sense of camaraderie forming between him and Violet. The tension from the day before had eased, replaced by something else, something less about survival and more about mutual understanding. I admit, Violeth said as they sat down to continue the treaty discussion, you handled the simulation better than expected. Venric chuckled, still feeling the exhaustion from the training session. Well, I guess I'm more adaptable than I look. Violeth gave him a sidelong glance, her smile returning. Perhaps, but there is still much you don't know about my people. I'm learning, Venric replied with a grin. Slowly, but I'm learning. Jaitiri, sitting across from them, observed the exchange with her usual stoic calm. It seems, she said, her voice as neutral as ever, that trust is beginning to form. Venric glanced at Violeth, who nodded in agreement. Yes, she said softly, trust. And in that moment, Venric realized that this wasn't just a negotiation about peace between two factions. It was about something much more personal, building a bond that transcended species, culture, and the barriers they had each brought to the table. The conference room had become a second home for Venric, though not in the comforting, this is where I belong way, more like the I'm stuck here negotiating with an alien warrior who could tear me apart kind of way, but as the days passed, something had shifted between him and Violeth. The tension, once sharp and intimidating, had softened into something more familiar, almost comfortable, almost. Jaitiri, ever the unflappable mediator, presided over today's session with the same air of calm authority. She was reading through the latest revision of the peace agreement, her expression unreadable. Weinrich, on the other hand, found his attention wandering to Virleth, who was seated across from him, her arms crossed, her eyes focused intently on the table. Since the training session, Virleth had been different, not less intense, that would be impossible, but more present. There were moments when she caught his eye and held his gaze, moments when her teasing felt less like a challenge and more like connection, but today she seemed quieter, more reserved. Venric couldn't shake the feeling that something was bothering her. I believe we've addressed the resource allocation issues, Jaitiri was saying, her voice smooth as ever. Shall we move on to joint defense protocols? Venric snapped back to attention. Right, yes, defense protocols, absolutely. Virleth's eyes flicked up at him, but she didn't say anything. She was quiet, almost brooding. Jaitiri noticed, too, though her reaction was subtle, a slight pause in her speech, a barely perceptible glance in Violeth's direction. Violeth, Jaitiri said, her tone a touch softer than usual. Do you have any thoughts on the proposed protocols? For a moment, Violeth didn't respond. Then slowly, she shook her head. Not at this time. Venric frowned. This was definitely not the Violeth he was used to. The Violeth he knew would have had at least ten objections, a dozen counter-arguments, and a scathing remark about human incompetence by now. Is everything all right? Vanrick asked before he could stop himself. Vireleth's eyes snapped to his, and for a second the intensity was back. Sharp, focused, dangerous. But then, just as quickly it faded. She looked away, her posture tense but somehow tired. I am fine, she said quietly her voice lacking its usual edge. Venric exchanged a glance with Jaitiri, who, for once, seemed just as unsure of what to do as he was. Perhaps we should take a break, Jaitiri suggested. It has been a long day. Vureleth didn't protest, which was all the confirmation Vanric needed that something was wrong. Later that evening, Vanric found himself wandering the halls of the alien embassy, unsure of why he was doing what he was about to do. He wasn't exactly the comforting type. His expertise was in diplomacy, not personal support. But something about Viorleth's behavior had unsettled him. The warrior he had come to know was strong, confident, unshakable. And yet, today, she had seemed vulnerable. And if there was one thing he had learned over the past few days, it was that vulnerability was not something Viorleth showed lightly. He found her in the embassy's private training chamber, standing in the center of the room, her eyes closed, her breathing slow and measured. 
She wasn't practicing her combat moves as he had expected. She was simply standing there, still and silent, as if trying to calm something deep within herself. Viorleth, he called out softly, not wanting to startle her. Her eyes opened, and for a moment there was that same sharpness, the warrior on high alert. But when she saw it was him, her posture relaxed slightly. Vanric, she said, her voice steady but lacking its usual bite. Why are you here? I could ask you the same thing, he replied, taking a cautious step forward. You seemed off during the negotiations. I wanted to check in. She raised an eyebrow. Check in? He shrugged, trying to play it cool. You know, make sure you're all right, that sort of thing. Viorleth regarded him for a long moment, her silver eyes searching his face for something. Finally, she sighed and looked away. I am not all right, she admitted quietly, but it is not something that concerns you. Actually, it does, Venric said, surprising even himself with his boldness. We're working together and you're not yourself. That concerns me. Viorleth's jaw tightened and for a moment he thought she might snap at him, but instead she closed her eyes and exhaled slowly. In my culture, she began, her voice measured, strength is everything. To show weakness is to invite defeat. It is a lesson I learned long ago, and it has served me well. But now... She trailed off, her hands clenching into fists at her sides. Vanrick waited, unsure of what to say. This wasn't the fierce warrior who had challenged him at every turn. This was someone else, someone who carried a weight that he was only beginning to understand. Now, he prompted gently. Virleth's eyes opened, and when she looked at him there was something raw and unguarded in her gaze. Now, I find myself questioning that lesson. For the first time in my life, I wonder if strength is the only path. If perhaps, vulnerability has its own power. Venric blinked, taken aback by her honesty. Vulnerability isn't weakness, he said softly. It's, it's being real, being open. I mean, look at us. We've been stumbling through these negotiations, learning about each other's cultures, making mistakes. But through all of that, we've built trust. Isn't that a kind of strength? Virleth studied him for a long moment, her expression unreadable. Then slowly, she nodded. Perhaps you are right. Venric took another step closer, sensing that this was a rare moment, one where the walls between them had dropped, even if only slightly. I know I'm not a warrior, he said, his voice quiet but steady, but I've learned something about strength over the years. It's not just about being tough or fearless. Sometimes it's about knowing when to let someone else in. Viorleth's gaze softened, and for the first time since they had met she looked unsure. Letting someone in is not something I am accustomed to. Vanric offered her a small, reassuring smile. Neither am I, but maybe we can figure it out together. For a moment there was silence between them, comfortable, not tense. Viorleth held his gaze, her fierce exterior cracking just enough to let a glimmer of something else shine through. I will consider it, she said, her voice softer than he had ever heard it. Venric nodded, sensing that this was as much of a victory as he was going to get tonight. That's all I ask. As he turned to leave, Viorleth's voice stopped him. Venric, he glanced back, meeting her eyes. Thank you, she said quietly. For a moment he wasn't sure what to say, but then he smiled, genuine and warm. Any time. And with that, he left the training chamber, feeling like he had just crossed a threshold in his relationship with Viorleth, one that had nothing to do with diplomacy or negotiations and everything to do with trust. The dawn of the final day of negotiations arrived with a palpable tension in the air. Vanric felt it the moment he walked into the embassy's conference room. Jaitiri was already there, her typical serene demeanor in place as she reviewed the final drafts of the treaty. Viorleth, however, was absent, and that immediately put Vanric on edge. He had spent the night replaying his conversation with her, turning over every word in his head. Their exchange had been unexpected. Not just because of what Viorleth had shared, but because of how real it had felt. He had come to see her as more than just a warrior with a sharp tongue and an intimidating presence. She was complex, layered, and, despite everything, a little lost, just like him. Where's Viorleth? Vanric asked, his voice more casual than he felt as he took his seat. She has chosen to reflect on the negotiations before the final meeting, Jaitiri said, not looking up from her documents. 
It is customary for warriors of her stature to prepare themselves for significant moments. Vanric nodded, though he couldn't shake the sense that something more was going on. Jaitiri's words, though carefully neutral, had an undertone he couldn't quite place. Just as he was about to ask further, the door to the conference room whooshed open. Violeth strode in, her armor gleaming under the soft lights, but there was something different about her. Her usual fierce intensity was tempered, her posture less rigid, and her eyes, those piercing silver eyes, held a depth of emotion Venric hadn't seen before. Jaitiri glanced up briefly, acknowledging her arrival with a small nod. Shall we proceed? Viorleth took her seat, her gaze flickering to Vanric for a moment before settling on the treaty documents before her. Yes, she said, her voice calm but carrying an undercurrent of something deeper. Let us conclude this. The negotiations began, but Vanric found it hard to focus. His mind kept drifting to Viorleth, her words from the night before, the look in her eyes when she had thanked him. Something had shifted between them, and it was more than just mutual respect. It was trust, yes, but also something unspoken, something that hummed in the air between them. As the final terms were reviewed and agreed upon, Jayatiri, ever the pragmatic diplomat, spoke with precision. The treaty will ensure the continued peace and cooperation between our people. The Joint Defense Initiative is a significant step forward in understanding each other's strengths and methods. Vanrick nodded, adding, and the resource-sharing agreement will allow both our worlds to benefit from each other's unique environments. It's a win-win for everyone. Virleth remained quiet throughout the process, but Vanrick could sense her internal struggle. She had been open with him the night before in a way that surprised them both, but now she seemed guarded again. Perhaps it was the weight of the treaty, the realization that after today they would part ways. Is there anything further you wish to discuss? Jatiri asked, glancing between the two of them. For a moment there was silence, then Viorleth spoke, her voice steady but filled with a quiet intensity. There is one more matter, Jatiri arched an eyebrow. Proceed. Viorleth turned her gaze to Vanric, and for the first time since they had met, there was no trace of the warrior's mask. She was raw, unguarded, and somehow more powerful than ever. The bond between our people has been forged through these negotiations, but the bond between individuals is equally important. Venric blinked, unsure where she was going with this. What do you mean? Virleth held his gaze, her silver eyes unwavering. You spoke of vulnerability last night, of trust. You said it was a form of strength. I did, Vanric replied, his throat suddenly dry, and I meant it. Then it is time for me to show you the truth, Viorleth said, standing. She gestured to Jaitiri, who simply nodded in silent understanding. Vanric stood as well, feeling a surge of nervous energy. What's going on? Jaitiri's voice was calm, as always. It is a tradition among Viorleth's people to offer a bond of trust with those they consider their equals. It is a deeply personal act, one not taken lightly. A bond of trust? Vanric repeated, glancing between the two of them. Vierleth stepped forward, closing the distance between them until she stood directly in front of him. In our culture, warriors do not form bonds easily. We are taught that strength comes from independence, from standing alone. But I have learned through these negotiations, and through you, that there is strength in unity, in trusting others to stand with us. Venric felt his heart hammering in his chest. Vierleth, I... This is not about diplomacy, she interrupted, her voice quiet but firm. This is about what comes after. You have shown me that vulnerability is not weakness. That trust is earned, not given. And now, I offer you my trust. He stared at her, his mind racing. This was more than just words. This was something sacred, something far beyond the scope of their negotiations. I... Venric struggled to find the right words, feeling the weight of what she was offering. I don't know what to say. You do not need to say anything, Viorleth said softly. You have already proven yourself. Without another word, she reached out, placing her hand over his heart, her touch light but filled with meaning. It wasn't an intimate gesture in the physical sense, but it carried a depth of emotion that Vanric had never experienced before. It was an unspoken vow, a bond of trust that transcended words. Vanric placed his hand over hers, his heart pounding in his chest. I trust you too, Virleth. For a moment, the world around them seemed to fade away, leaving only the two of them standing there, 
connected by something more profound than treaties or negotiations. It was a bond of understanding, of mutual respect, and perhaps of something deeper. Jaitiri, ever the composed diplomat, broke the silence with a small nod. The bond is formed. It will strengthen both of you, and through it, strengthen the bond between our people. Vireleth stepped back, her eyes still locked on Vanrick's. This is not goodbye, Vanrick. Our paths will cross again. He smiled, feeling a warmth spread through him that had nothing to do with the room's temperature. I hope so. As they concluded the negotiations and the final signatures were made, Venric couldn't help but feel that something unbelievable had happened, not just in the treaty they had signed, but in the connection he had formed with Virleth. It was a bond that would last, a testament to the strength they had found in each other. Later that day, as the sun set over the alien embassy and the final farewells were exchanged, Venric stood on the balcony, looking out at the horizon. He didn't feel the usual sense of closure that came with completing a mission. Instead, he felt something open, something new. Venric? He turned to see Vierleth standing behind him, her posture relaxed but her eyes still filled with that same intensity. Leaving without saying goodbye, she teased, her lips curving into a small smile. I thought we already said goodbye, he replied, matching her smile. Not quite. Vierleth stepped closer, her gaze softening. I wanted to thank you for everything. He shook his head. You don't have to thank me. We've both learned a lot. Perhaps, she said, her voice low, but I am grateful nonetheless. For a moment they stood in comfortable silence, the weight of the moment settling between them. And remember, Vierleth added, her smile widening, if you ever find yourself in need of a warrior's protection, you know where to find me. Venric chuckled. I'll keep that in mind. With one last shared glance... Vyorleth nodded and turned to leave, her presence as commanding as ever. But this time, Vanrick didn't feel intimidated. He felt... connected. As she disappeared into the shadows of the embassy, Vanrick looked out at the sky once more, knowing that this was only the beginning of something far greater than he had ever anticipated.